check, check, check. So it's been like two weeks since I posted a video, so I'm sorry for being MIA. I've been trying to get the studio set up. It's still a little bit noisy and reverby in here, but that's okay. And I also have to avoid the loud cars and sirens until, you know, we get these windows sound paneled and isolated. But anyways, today we're gonna go over the exposure for cameras. And this is mainly centered around photography, not necessarily video. If I was doing video, this could be a whole separate YouTube video, video, video. Feel like i'm saying video too much anyway so today let's go over how to properly expose for photography and this can be for beginners or even professionals maybe you don't know some of the stuff that i'm about to tell you and i don't know everything but this is what i've learned throughout the five or six years of experience that i have so really the first thing with exposure you want to make the decisions yourself don't let the camera do it for you so with that being said you want to go from auto to manual and this just allows you to have way more creative freedom when it comes to properly exposing your photos and as i was testing this out i realized that more professional gear like this Canon L-Series lens and this Sony a7R II actually performs quite well in auto settings and given great lighting. So if you're in bad lighting, it is obviously way more important to turn it down to manual exposure. So in order to access all these features I'm about to mention, so most cameras are the same, but depending on the brand of the camera, the way it comes out of the box, it may be a little different, but this is how I have it set up. And normally you can change this within your settings menu. So the way I like to configure it is my right index finger controls the shutter speed, my right thumb, controls the aperture and my right thumb as well on the back of the camera by pushing the ISO button controls the ISO. And now we're about to get into all of these settings and what they actually mean. So when it comes to exposure, there are three main variables. You have your ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Your ISO and your shutter speed are all related to the body of your camera and the aperture is controlled through the lens of your camera. So in order to explain this clearly, let's go the way the light is going into the camera. So first is the lens, and the lens is the aperture. And aperture is how much light is let into the sensor of the camera. And you can see this by turning up and down the aperture so you can see the blades closing and opening depending on which way you're going, of course. Oh, and by the way, aperture and f-stop, you may hear these terms on and off depending on who you're talking to it means the same thing. So when you raise your aperture, you're actually restricting the amount of light coming through the lens, hitting the sensor. And when you lower your aperture, of course, you're letting more light in as you open up those blades. So when you hear a photographer say, I have a fast lens, that means it lets more light in. The typical range for aperture is a right around 1.8 to F22. And depending on how fast your lens is, those numbers can go down more, letting more light in. For example, this Canon 50 millimeter is a 1.2, which is super fast and lets a lot of light in. So besides changing the exposure, it also affects the depth of field, which is why photographers like fast lenses because the more light that's let in, the blurrier the background or the bokeh is in the photo. For example, this Canon 50 millimeter 1.2, this is a photographer's portrait choice usually because it allows so much light in and it blurs out the background. So some of the rules and tips that I have when it comes to aperture is don't always leave it wide open. Yes, that's very tempting to do as a beginner and you know take blurry background photos, but it's very distracting when only one little piece of your subject is in focus and the rest is completely blown out. So as we're following the light through the lens, it has another barrier, which is your second exposure setting called shutter speed, which is the amount of time the light hits the sensor. So for photographers, since you want that blurrier background, typically your aperture will remain constant, but your shutter speed controls your actual brightness of the photo. So like I said beforehand, aperture controls the variable of depth of field, but shutter speed actually controls the motion blur of a photo. So the longer the sensor is exposed to light, the more motion blur is let into your camera. Since shutter speed is your primary form of adjusting exposure, there are a lot of rules and caveats that come into play. One of those being is never set your shutter speed lower than the focal length of your camera. I've also heard that it's double your camera focal length, but with sensors having stabilization nowadays, you can kind of get away with this rule. For example, with this 50 millimeter lens, I never wanna go below one over 100th of a second, or I'll start introducing that motion blur. Or if I'm at 100 focal length, I never wanna go below one over 200th of a second. So when you look at shutter speed on a scale, you have 30 second exposure, which means you're letting in a lot of light, which increases your motion blur, and you have one over 8,000th of a second, or one over 4,000th of a second, depending on your camera, which lets in very little light at a time, which decreases your motion blur literally to zero. So depending on how much motion is in your photos, for example, sports photography, you wanna be on the higher end, 
But if you're doing stuff like on a tripod where astrophotography or low light stuff, you want to go over to the higher exposure times. So my general rule for slower shutter speed times is past one over 40th of a second, you kind of want to be on a tripod because you'll get your hand motion blur whenever you're taking the photo. So as we're following the light coming through the camera, we've hit the aperture, which controls the amount of light. We've hit the shutter speed, which controls the timing of the light. And then we have the ISO, which controls the sensitivity of the light, or it basically means how sensitive your sensor is on your camera. With ISO, the higher the number, the more sensitive your sensor is to light. And different cameras have different capabilities when it comes to low light and ISO performance. And all also ISO controls another variable. So we've talked about aperture controlling depth of field. We've talked about shutter speed controlling motion blur. ISO controls the grain in a photo. The higher your ISO, so the higher the number, the more that grain is introduced into your photo. With ISO, I have a couple of rules and tips. Really, it should be the last resort when exposing a photo. If you can't control your shutter speed, you can't control your aperture, then you can mess with the ISO settings. And for me personally, digital grain is the ultimate sign of an amateur photographer. Sure, in some creative art styles, it can be good or it can look really cool and unique, but typically you want it at the lowest setting to let in the least amount of grain within your photo. With all of that being said, you now know how to properly expose your photos. Aperture, which is the amount of light hitting your camera and also the depth of field, your shutter speed, which is the time the light hits your camera, which also controls motion blur, and your ISO, which is the sensitivity of that light and the digital grain that's let into your photos. And the great thing about knowing all of this, it's universal. You can apply this to really any camera that exists on the market. For example, this film camera, you have your shutter speed, you have your aperture, and your ISO is the sensitivity of the film within that camera. Anyways, guys, that's it. That's all I have. If you learned something, make sure you give this video a like. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button. But for now, see you next time.